Hey everyone, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage and this is uh, installment part three of the Restoration Toolbox series. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about parts uh, that are vintage or used uh, for vintage sewing machines and why you might want them and how, what the most uh, practical way is to come across them. Now you might think after seeing the video I made on new sewing machine parts for vintage sewing machines, you think, well, well what do I need the old ones for? In many instances, uh, vintage sewing machine parts are really important to you uh, because they are often needed because they don't make reproductions for every sewing machine part. In fact, many of them they don't. I showed you uh, some of those in the last video that you can get, and it's wonderful to be able to get them, particularly for rubber and, and uh, 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 plastic parts that, that, uh, that don't necessarily last the way metal parts do. So I'm going to talk to you about a... Uh, and I'll list, I'll list in the, uh, the video description where you can get, uh, where I get a lot of my vintage parts. Most of the parts that I've got uh, in my collection, and I have quite a few, you're going to see a sampling of them today. The ones that I find uh, maybe most important to talk to you about. Most of these I actually get when I get a, a sewing machine. Uh, they are often squirreled away in the drawers of sewing machine tables and cabinets. And other times, you know, I always remember to ask the person I'm getting the sewing machine from, are there uh, attachments, are there any parts or accessories, uh, manuals, anything like that? Because a lot of people forget. And sometimes they may have a box or a bag of stuff that went with the machine and they may forget and um, they may have put it somewhere and forgot they even had it. Right, particularly when it's not when they are not the original owner of the machine. So, uh, with that said, I wanted to talk to you about some of the things that you will want to hold on to. Now, uh, I'm going to mostly show you parts. Uh, I'm going to create a separate video on sewing machine accessories from the vintage era. Uh, every time I make a video, I think of a new video I want to make. So I'm not going to be describing these to you, but I'm talking to those of you who are out looking for machines and you you find things. You know, you start, people say, well, do you want this? It comes with the machine. And you should always say yes. <laughs> Anytime you get a machine and something came with it, go ahead and say yes to it, even if you're not sure what it does, because you will discover later that there may be something um, crucial to the operation of the machine. And if not, you get, uh, and I'll talk about this when I discuss sewing machine tables and cabinets, you get this wonderful history that goes with the machine. And of course, there are tons of different accessories in here. One of the th reasons I do this also is that very often uh, uh, I get multiples of the same type of uh, sewing foot or attachment. Uh, how and why people end up with multiple copies of these, I don't know. Maybe they got them from their friends and they forgot they had some. But I like this because when I uh, restore a sewing machine and then I get ready to sell it and I find a client for it, I always offer them the original table or the carrying case and the set of sewing attachments that came with it. Now, very often you'll find some of the more popular attachments. My goodness, there were there, they will have like three of the same thing. And if that's the case, I always uh, provide my customer one of them and, and they don't need multiples. And then I, I kind of archive extra copies and I have to because uh, I may get a future machine or a future customer and I don't even have a single straight foot, um, straight stitch foot to offer them. And so you definitely want to have um, uh, options for every customer. So I basically like to kind of sprinkle them around and make sure everyone has at least one of, of, of an attachment if I have them. Uh, sometimes you will see things and you won't even know what they are. This, this is a vintage Singer lint brush and it's so small I thought it was a pipe cleaner at first but it's not. It's a very narrow lint brush and they're kind of cool. I wish they still made lint brushes this, uh, in this size but anyway those are types of things that you'll find. Uh, the main reason I wanted to show you folks this is if you see something and you're not sure what it is Go ahead and take it, hold on to it, don't discard it. For example, you may have a Singer 66 or 99 
model and you want to drop the feed dogs. Well, you can't on those machines. They were not engineered to do that, but they came with cover plates. And these, this is one example of a cover plate. They come in other shapes. When I cover, when I cover, when I go over the sewing machine attachments in, a, in a, yet another video, uh, I will cover exactly what these are for and we'll, we'll discuss them. But the main point here is that you can end up tossing something away and later find out, oh wow, I wish I kept that. So that's important. Uh, many of these machines, uh, you will find them sometimes with needle threaders. The Neki is one of my favorite. Notice it says automatic. Everything in those days they, they kept trying to call automatic. Here's a Kenmore one. But keep these. You, you may have a customer that would like to have this, right? Either because it's part of the history, the provenance of the machine, the history of it, or maybe they actually would like to use it, right? Remember, vintage sewing machines don't have built-in needle threaders. And so uh, any of these things are helpful. But anyway, we're gonna do more, uh, we'll have more discussion about accessories, but just kind of a heads up, if you get a machine and it comes with these things, please don't throw them away. You definitely want to say yes to any accessories that came with the machine. So, okay, let's talk about parts. Um, these are <laughs> some of the most more unusual looking objects. Uh, these are parts that I salvaged uh, from uh, a couple of the very few sewing tables that I couldn't save. It's very unusual that I cannot uh, save a sewing machine table, but I've had a few that were so, so abused and so far gone that just like any machine that cannot be saved, you want to salvage any part you can. These are fabric tubes, and they have little metal ends on them, and I use them because uh, if I get a table in the future that is missing one, these are used to hold uh, uh, Singer electrical cords in place underneath the table in certain areas where you don't want the cord to to flop around. It's, it's, it's a very obscure uh, thing. You may have never even seen these unless you've crawled underneath a Singer table. But again, I don't, I, I don't know that I can buy these new, so I want to hold on to them because I may need them again. Let's see here. Uh, you will see, again, this is a part of the accessory. You'll see things like templates for buttonholers. Uh, all sorts of things, guys, you're going to find in, in sometimes when you get a sewing machine. Be careful and be sure that you keep them all. Here's a blind stitch attachment. It may not seem important, but if you have a customer who wants to sew, or maybe you're doing this for yourself and you're restoring the machine for, for you, if you have a straight stitch vintage model and you want to hem clothing, maybe hem trousers, it would be awfully nice to have a blind stitch attachment. So again, you can get these <clears throat> um, outside of, of, of the machine. You can find them online, but I, I like to hold on to things when they come with the machine. Here's a screw, and I showed you guys screws in the, in the parts. This is a vintage screw. This is, um, is a uh, screw. You get two of them normally on a vintage machine, and they hold the needle plate in place. These go to a singer. And again, some of these screws you can get uh, new replacements for, but the vintage screws are superior in quality, and I kid you not. We can, when we talk about accessories, we can start talking about quality and geek out on, 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 on things like metal quality. Um, let's see, here are some of the uh, tools, the tools, the vintage parts that I have cataloged for myself. Notice this says class 15, bobbin cases and hooks. These are, these will fit a variety of 15 machines, some of them the, the Japanese clones, and some of these will fit uh, actual singers. This, these are more generic in nature, and they vary depending on uh, the actual setup of, of the bobbin case itself. But again, this is a, a point to make. You want to start cataloging parts because eventually you'll, you may, if you end up like me, you'll have so many, you won't be able to, to instantly look at them and tell what they are. So here's a, let's lay out a few more bags for you guys. Here's a Singer 66 bobbin winder. I ended up taking a winder uh, apart because it had failed and I salvaged a pieces of it, one of which is the spring. Uh, I save things like bobbin winder springs. Yeah, I can, for singers, I can get new replacements, but I am not kidding you when I say that the quality of the springs, uh, it isn't what it used to be. And I know that sounds silly, but it's true. 
Now here is something I cataloged. It says early 1900s Singer 15 class. The Singer 15 class was in production for a very long time. We're talking about generations. But the early ones had a slightly different setup. So what you're, I don't know if you can see this through the bag, but these are the, uh, the race and the, uh, the uh, shuttle hooks for uh, early 1900s uh, Singer class, fi class 15 machines. And so I keep those. Here's uh, more parts uh, off of a 66. Again, it's very unusual that a machine cannot be saved or a table, but if that's the case, uh, you definitely want to, to salvage those. You know, these, these parts are like gold, guys. Uh, here's a, a clutch and a clutch washer off a Singer 66. Um, this bag I just categorize generally as low shank Singer and others. These are low shank uh, feet. Um, there's sort of a variety in here. I try to catalog things in a way where all the the, the the same shank styles are together, right? I don't want to mix my slant shank or high shank with my low shank feet. It's just silly to do that. Here's something where I was very specific with screws. These came off of a Kenmore 158 series, and I think these are the screws that attach the top. You definitely want to catalog this because you put this in a pile of screws, it's going to be hard to remember. You're going to have, you're going to have a long search on your hands to, to locate it again. Um, sometimes you will come across plastic discs that look like this. These are stitch cams. Uh, these went to a Kenmore, and I know this. Uh, I recognize them, and they, a lot of those Kenmore machines were this same color. The one on the right is a decorative stitch cam, and that's kind of a cool thing to have. Sometimes you will find that sewing machines, uh, particularly Kenmore's, there were so many different uh, price points you might have a machine that, that could do straight stitch and zigzag. You might have another machine that did only straight stitch. There was another machine that was priced between the two where it would do a straight stitch and then it, yes, it would do a zigzag, but you had to have the cam. So some of these little plastic cams are more valuable than others. Now this one is for a blind stitch. And that's, again, one of the more useful of the decorative stitches. So again, if you get a pile or a bag of parts that come with the machine, do, if it doesn't look like it belongs to a machine, don't toss it. Hold on to it until you get a chance to figure out what you have. Um, here's a common part that uh, is very useful to have. This is a one of the large washers that fits many of the Singer machines. This is the clutch knob washer. The clutch knob is the little knob inside the big hand wheel that you turn uh, when you're disengaging the drive shaft uh, so that you can wind a bobbin. Let's see. Uh, here is a, uh, and here's a great example, guys. I told you to save things and scavenge uh, machines for parts. Um, in a video I made recently, I showed all of you some new machines that I uh, rescued, and I'm going to try to bring back and restore. One of them is a Freearm Kenmore. It's one of my favorite Kenmores from, uh, from the 70s. Um, and uh, you may remember in that video that the tension assembly was... You know, it was off when I got the machine. It's in parts. I don't know if it needs uh, pieces to make it work again. I don't know if it just needs reassembly. But if I need one, I have one. And fortunately, I, uh, I cataloged what this was. So this is going to come back to me, and I may be able to rescue a really wonderful machine, one of the last great vintage machines ever made, um, and I'll be able to do it because I have that part. You can search for vintage parts, but I like having it on hand already. Now, this is, this may look awfully obscure, folks. This says Singer buttonhole, buttonholer screws. Uh, excuse me, Singer button controller screws. Sorry about that. And I, I'll bring this out. One of the few uh, sewing machine foot pedals that I, in fact, it's, they're the only ones I really restore are the Singer button style. Uh, they are they are wonderfully user friendly to work on, and I plan on doing yet another future video to talk about that. But sometimes, on uh, rare occasions, they're damaged. Maybe they've been dropped. And what I do is I disassemble them. I save all of the good parts. Here's the Bakelite shell to one, and you can see its little its little uh, button piece, right? And I save the screws. The screws, in this case, attach the uh, little feet, 
and this is a, a new, this is actually a, a new part. Uh, they have rubber feet that fit down um, and attach the base, which you don't see here, uh, the base of the controller to the shell. And you need the screws. Well, it's awfully nice to have the screws, uh, but you can get a lot of these rubber parts, and, and I've mentioned this before, they dry rot, right? And so sometimes you need new ones. That's a new part that got snuck into the video here. Uh, but it's great, and I have a number of these. I have quite a few of these that I, uh, I save parts for because they're one of the uh, one of the, they one of the only foot pedals that I I'm willing to restore on a machine instead of replacing it with a new one. Now I have a bunch of little pieces of glass here. Make sure they are getting in in the camera here. Okay. So you're seeing lots of glass. This glass, these glass uh, pieces came off of lenses. Now, sometimes I have to remove, here's an example of a Singer light fixture or part of one. You can see, I think you can still see the Singer. It's a little faint there. You can see where it says Singer. This one uh, has the glass. And this uh, probably came off a light fixture that um, had wiring issues. And so I removed it, but I wanted to save the glass. Now, you say, well, what, what use is that? Well, you may find in the future that you get a machine and it has a great light fixture, but the glass is missing. And wouldn't it be nice to have a piece of uh, original uh, vintage glass to put back over uh, that covers over the light bulb? Here's one that is, let's see, this came off of a Singer Slant uh, 301 series, actually. And <clears throat> uh, I came upon this. In fact, I think I found it in a drawer somewhere, but it wasn't for a Singer Slant machine. Uh, it's funny how these parts, the parts find their way to me, and I can't always remember the history of how I got them. But <clears throat> I'll, I'll give you an example of one of the most common reasons that the glass is missing on a sewing machine. This is the light fixture you will see on Singer 66 models, 99 models, and 185Js or 185Ks. Now, you can see here this light fixture, um, I, uh, when I got the machine, I removed it because it, it uh, had wiring issues and I chose not to rewire this particular one. Now, if you look on the front, this one still has its original glass. When you take this off, you push in and you turn it. Uh, they get a little stiff sometimes, and they come out. And you had to do that to replace the light bulb. Well, you can imagine with the incandescent light bulbs, people who sewed a lot, the bulb would burn out and they would go to change it. Well, they would take this out, they would put the new bulb in, and then they would have sometimes a difficult time getting this little glass lens back on. And they would say, oh, the heck with it. And they would just use the light. And this glass lens would get lost or put in a drawer and... And, but the funny thing is, I will get a Singer machine that has this light fixture. The light fixture, again, just like the other, is good, but it's missing the little glass piece. And so I replace the bulb, and then I have a spare, and I put it back. Now, Singer said that these were magnifiers. Uh, you can focus light with these. I don't know that you can create more light than there is, right? And you guys have heard me talk about sewing machine lights. You know, they're not the brightest thing in the world, and it's nice to have some auxiliary lights. But again, these pieces of glass are useful to hold on to. So if you get one and you don't have something that it goes to, hold on to it because uh, it's, it's not unusual. You may end up getting a sewing machine that's missing its glass piece. So that's, that's a really useful thing. Let's see. Sometimes you get parts, and I swear, you know, I first saw this and I had no idea. I got two of these right now. I had no idea what they were. Um, what I discovered is that uh, the slant o -matic machines, these are the 400 series, the 500 series, um, and sometimes the 301s, the plugs that they have, uh, when you go to plug in the uh, foot pedal, because the foot pedals had a separate plug on the, uh, on the 400 and the 300 series. And so instead of taking the, the plug and putting it into the machine, there was a little extension. So you would plug this into this, and then of course this piece would plug into the machine itself. And for a long time, I didn't know what it was, but I had it and I held on to it. I'm sure glad I did. So whenever I have a, a slantomatic machine, I can, I can use this and offer it to my customer, and it's a nice little piece to have. Um, again, you never know. 
In terms of spare parts, I was showing you guys the, the pieces of a button style controller. Sometimes I end up with extra foot controllers and I, here I have the whole one and even it has a, a cord attached to it. You see it, it's got little rubber feet and uh, these are in good shape. They're not going to need to be replaced. So why do I have it? Well about half of my customers really love Singer button style foot pedals. Other people, because to use this when you have to roll the ball of your foot on it, and it was designed to prevent foot fatigue, but a lot of people are used to the new uh, foot pedals that are used, you know, they're like accelerators. You push your foot down on them like in a car. And for those people, they don't want this. And so I hold on to the foot, the button style, and I provide them a new, uh, uh, you know, electronic uh, foot pedal. And I keep this because sometimes I get a machine that doesn't even have a button style pedal to begin with. Let's see. Okay. Now I've been showing you, I'll show you a few more Singer parts here. Here's a hand wheel. Now, some of my sewing machines, you folks have seen uh, videos I've made in the past where I've showed off machines where I actually replaced the motor and the hand wheel. I used a stronger motor and a bigger, heavier hand wheel for that purpose. Now, uh, typically I don't do that with 201s, but this is the hand wheel that fits a Singer 201. Hand wheels, uh, honestly, are, are not things that typically wear out. Uh, there are some European machines where you have issues with hand wheels. Uh, this hand wheel has, you can't see through here, maybe you can. Oh. Here's that Textolite gear. It doesn't, doesn't it's, it's kind of dark just like the rest of the rest of the hand wheel here guys but anyway uh, I've never had to replace a text like gear ever but again if you have a uh, you never know sometimes I might get a machine that doesn't even have a hand wheel who knows people take things apart and they they lose things but again it's if you have one of these then hold on to it maybe 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 you have a machine you can't save uh, and you want to save parts for it you just never know and uh, let's see, we will talk about accessories. Uh, I'm going to do a whole video on accessories, guys, but again, you may get things and you're not sure what they do. Here's an example. So now this box has something called a stocking darner, okay, and it's a little device, and I'll, I'll open it up and show it to you when I do the video on attachments, but that one's obvious, in case at least you know what it is. This little uh, uh, think this was in a drawer of a machine I got and it's called a Singer Craft Guide okay and we'll talk more about what it's used for but again even if you don't know what it is don't toss it away don't throw it away uh, here are some <clears throat> these don't look very glamorous but I can promise you they're quite useful these are brackets that hold sewing machine motors to a sewing machine there are times when you might end up replacing a sewing machine's electric motor, and you may do it for different reasons. Sometimes it's because you simply want to change it out for more power. Other times the old motor is no good, right? It's fried and you need to replace it either with a new motor or certainly with a, uh, a, a vintage motor that's in better shape. Now, different motors have different patterns for their screws. They have little bolts. Um, or screws I should say and they uh, they have holes in the back of the motor and you need to attach the motor to the bracket and then of course the bracket <clears throat> will attach to the side of the machine with a bolt. Well I keep these because I never know I've had to actually change motors on machines before and the bracket wouldn't fit the new motor I had but I had extra brackets and again that would save the day. Here I've actually got, uh, this one has the bolt, I've taped it to keep that bolt in place. But anyway, if you end up with a machine that you have to pull parts from, don't forget, even if the motor's bad, save the bracket, right? Save yourself uh, the, the hassle of having to go and look for a bracket. Let's see, I'm going to show you guys. Now, these two bags are parts to Neki, a Neki machine. These go to a Neki Nora. This was a, these are decorative stitch cams. Now, these cams are a lot less easy to find, more rare. I don't like using that word too often, but they're just, uh, they're scarce. <laughs> okay, we'll call them scarce. Compared to things like uh, Kenmore or certainly uh, compared to Singer cams. So, 
if you ever get a sewing machine and it has all, all these little plastic discs, you may get a machine that doesn't even use discs and somehow someone has a bunch of discs in there. Don't toss them. You may find use for them at some point in the future. Here's a, here's a great example. Now, these are parts that I salvaged. Uh, a Neki BU Mira, it's one of the only Nekis I, I uh, had to salvage, and it really, it really hurts when you have to do that to one of my favorite machines. Um, but this has the disc, uh, these are decorative discs that are used for something called the Neki Wonder Wheel, which was a way to get decorative stitches on that particular year's Neki. Um, these are, uh, you can find them online, but again, they're not as common as singers. And so, uh, again, I've got them, you know, I've got them cataloged, Neki BU Mirror. And I've got some of the high shank feet that go with the Neki. So, uh, if I come across another Mira, which I would love to, if I do, I will have extra parts for it. Uh, particularly, you want to do this particularly for machines that you know that you're going to, you're going to uh, restore. I have another uh, Singer 301 I'm getting ready to list soon. I love Singer 301s, any of the Singer rotary hook machines really. This is the plug end of a, um, this is the plug that, that, that connects the cord that powers the foot pedal on a Singer 301. And just like that brown cord I showed you before, it has, I don't know if you can pick this up in the light, guys, this is brass, right? It has brass, and it has brass uh, hardware inside its little Bakelite shell. So the cord was bad, but the shell's not, so I'm going to hold on to that, and I can always reuse it when I wire up a, a Singer 301. Uh, let's see, if you see something... Here's, a, here's an item I saved. I had a motor that went bad and I took off the pulley, right? So what if I end up getting a motor that's good but it doesn't have a pulley? Now I have one and this one has, if you look at it, you will see it even has the set screw. So I don't even have to find a new set screw for it. Let's see if I got that to focus. Um, so, you know, again, and these are fairly universal for a lot of the 1950s and 60s um, sewing machines, not the Singers, but, but all those Japanese machines and even some of the Italian machines will use those. Uh, let's see, uh, <clears throat> we'll talk more about accessories in a different video, but I, I couldn't, uh, couldn't resist showing this to you guys. Uh, I got this with a machine once and it's a set of needles and these have never, these, these are brand new, They've ne they were never used. This little package was never opened, it said Q needles, I'm like what the heck is that? This is a special needle that Sears had manufactured for uh, its machines. Uh, Sears doesn't look like much now, but once upon a time, they were such a powerful retailer. They could do things like this. They, had, they could go to a manufacturer and say, we want something special for our product if you want to sell it in our stores. Anyway, Q needles were, were introduced as a way to uh, make it easier to sew knits and stretch fabrics in the 70s when they were very popular and they even had special Q uh, uh, type sewing feet. Uh, again, those are only for Kenmore's, but there are people who want them. I, I promise you, they, there are people who, who uh, go crazy over those. Um, let's see, don't forget needle plates, guys. Here's a bag uh, <clears throat> in particular, I'll, I'll show you this one. Uh, I catalog all of my needle plates. And this says white zigzag straight stitch plate and feet. Now, that seems, sounds kind of odd, right? When you have a, a, zi a, a machine that does zigzag, you will have, let me pull this out, I really want you to see this. Um, you will have on the plate, you will have an opening, all right? You see where the feed dogs go. And then here, you'll have kind of an oval shaped uh, space for the, for the needle so it can go back and forth and create zigzag. Well, for many people, if you wanted to sew a very delicate fabric, maybe it was silk, something very lightweight, if you do a straight stitch on that fabric with the plate for zigzag, it can sometimes cause um, crumpling or, or um, it'll cause the fabric to, to, to deform because it's too much, uh, too much space. And so they would provide you a uh, accessory plate. This is a straight stitch plate. And it, notice it has a hole, and you can only do straight stitches in it. Uh, the key, of course, is you've got to remember to take it off when you do zigzag, or you're going to 
you're going to smash it, obviously. But again, this is something that it almost never got used. People, you might see this and think, oh, I don't need that. That's just an extra plate. Don't. You want to keep this and you want to keep it with the machine. Let's see here. Uh, of course, you were going to get, many times you'll get uh, screwdrivers. I already talked about screwdrivers in the tool video I made. So save the screwdrivers. Um, you, if you get five and your customer needs two or three, you know, offer them whatever they would like. Uh, and then, like I say, a lot of these things are repetitive and you have multiples of them, but you don't, don't take them for granted because you will need them in the future. Let's see. Uh, things like this I like to, to give to my customers if they want them. These are, this is a needle uh, packet. It's made of wood. Uh, you don't see that anymore. Uh, some people don't want these. They, you know, they say, oh, I've got my own needles, but um, this is one I use, uh, I use for myself, actually. I like putting my needles in there. Let's see. Uh, last but not least, um, actually not last, got a few more here. Needles. Now, this is not technically a sewing machine part. When you get a sewing machine, you will often get, especially if it was the original owner's machine, you will see things that were never used. You'll see thread and all kinds of stuff. This is a package of Singer sewing needles. I don't know the exact year, but I do know they were still using the old green and red uh, color scheme. They were 30 cents and you got three of them and they were made in West Germany and Singer needles are not made in West Germany anymore. So I'm gonna assume this has gotta be at least 40 years old. It's never been opened and I keep it. It's just kind of a cool keepsake. You know, I'm not gonna open it. Um, but it's kind of a nice, uh, it, it's almost like a little um, time capsule, you know. It tells you a lot about what, where things were made and what they cost. Now, another thing I've told you guys to always ask about accessories or parts that come with the machine when you're buying it. Always remember to ask if there's a manual. Don't assume that the manual is with the machine. Again, this is not intentional on the, the seller's part. Sometimes the person selling a machine to you doesn't know anything about sewing machines. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, grandma had a book somewhere, you know. So, so you need to help remind them to, to, to make sure you have everything that you're getting with a machine. Uh, this is, here's a Necky manual. It's almost mint condition. I can't believe the condition that was in. Here's one to a Singer 66 that's so old it talks to you about how to maintain your treadle machine. <laughs> so that's pretty old. Uh, 201K, uh, let's see, 66. Um, the, and again, you'll see, you'll see little booklets and it says buttonholer. Again, guys, you want to keep all of this because your customer may need it uh, and you may actually find it useful when you're trying to understand how to operate something. That would be definitely useful. Okay, last thing I wanted to cover with you guys is <clears throat> bobbins. Now bobbins, uh, you've heard me talk before in many of my videos that I encourage people to always use vintage metal bobbins. Sometimes you get a machine, a lot of times with the tables particularly, and you'll get bobbins to machines that have nothing to do with the machine you just bought. You have to remember over the years people would keep all of their sewing stuff in one place and uh, you know a neighbor or a friend might say hey I've got some extra bobbins Do you want them oh sure and so you might see Singer 15 class bobbins which are these uh, sometimes the 15 bob class bobbins are let's put it in front of the camera there so you can see um, they might be solid but most often they're gonna have the uh, the little little holes in the side. Uh, the classic Singer 66 bobbins, which are some of you just call drop-in style bobbins. They're called 66 because they were named after the Singer 66 machine. And then of course here are uh, featherweight bobbins that are also required in the Singer 301. Now I keep, uh, I try to keep a supply of bobbins on hand vintage bobbins and these are for my customers because sometimes I might have a machine that came with a bunch of bobbins and then I you know I, I provide those to the customer who buys the machine sometimes you get a machine and there are no bobbins okay and instead of uh, providing a machine to a person or selling it to them and saying hey be sure to get vintage bobbins when you can 
I really want to give them some. So if I get a machine with 30 bobbins, I'll take a few of them and I'll stash them away. And then when I have a customer who doesn't have any, I provide those for the customer. And this way they have at least a, a beginner set. Like they can get a start in a vintage bobbin. They can start sewing right away. And they're not tempted to go to a store and buy cheap uh, new metal bobbins, which I don't recommend. So again, these are things you want to keep on hand, guys. Uh, I basically gave you a sampling of all of the um, types, the types or kinds of vintage parts that I like to keep on hand. And uh, uh, you will see all sorts of things in your machine. This is an old Singer buttonholer. Uh, and again, I'm going to do a video on the accessories. That's a whole nother discussion about what were some of these things used for. Uh, some people want the accessories, some do not. But again, anytime you can get parts to any item uh, or accessories, if they come with the machine, you've already got yourself a great inventory of used parts. Um, and I'm going to provide uh, uh, links on the video, I promise, that will show you places where I have found vintage parts and had success. Uh, but again, the first place to look is the drawers in the tables or the cases that um, of the sewing machines you buy. You will find lots of old parts right in there. When you're working on a machine, let's say you're, you're tackling one and you come up on a, like I say, a, a, a light fixture and you can't, uh, you decided, no, I'm not going to use this. There are parts, there are switches, there are those beautiful glass lenses. Be sure to save these. Basically, there should be very little that you have to throw away when you were working on vintage machines because even if you're going to replace something, salvage those parts even down to the screws. Um, like I said, I was able to create a video out of just my old sewing machine parts. That's how valuable I consider these to be. Many of these you cannot replicate, you cannot buy new, and the quality of things like screws, I, I know it sounds silly but it's true, the quality of the screws from the vintage era uh, is just it's just uh, night and day compared to what you buy now today. I'm so grateful that we have access to reproduction parts for some of these machines. They are godsend, so don't get me wrong. There are times when I have bought uh, particularly rubber parts uh, and other parts I've had to get, you know, and you know, light bulbs obviously are new and they're fine. So, um, but if you can get vintage parts, uh, you know, hold on to them. Even if you don't know what they go to, you'll find out later, you'll research it. So. Uh, Consider that gold, guys. It's right right under your nose, so to speak. And uh, anyway, I appreciate you watching. I hope this was somewhat helpful. Uh, we can't touch on every single part. There are thousands. But I wanted to give you kind of a, a highlight of this. And again, all of these accessories, I sort of just sort of, I wanted to show these to you to make sure that you hold on to them. Uh, these are not parts that you use to restore machines. But a lot of times, you're going to need some of the sewing feet in order for your uh, for you or your customer to use the machine. And the main thing, uh, you know, the biggest takeaway here, folks, is don't throw any of this away. You will eventually find a use for it, a place for it, or you may know someone that does. So thank you for watching, and uh, I'm so glad I was able to get this uh, particular installment of, um, of this series done because I, I really wanted to emphasize that new parts are great, but the vintage parts are, uh, they're just, they're just incredible. And if you get them, you, you really hit on something. So thank you again for watching and uh, stay tuned. I'm going to be, obviously I've committed to a lot of future videos because you hear me talking about them in these videos. So anyway, have a great day and uh, feel free to subscribe and share your comments. Thanks a lot.